so good afternoon all of you <coughs> i think so we'll start because already 5 minutes are gone past 12 so today we are going to discuss events which have caused <coughs> or rather industrial events which have caused disasters industrial disasters in the past so such events we are going to discuss so the first and foremost event which is one one of the severest industrial disaster in the indian history is the bhopal gas tragedy So I'll show a small documentary over it, but just some details about it before I show you the documentary. So what happened? So among the worst industrial disasters of its time, and during that time it was the worst industrial disaster. Then of course Chernobyl accident was there, and uh, again there was a disaster in recent times also in India. There were two disasters which are there of similar. I not say in terms of life of uh, loss of life, but similar events were there when the disaster was observed. Disaster was uh, disaster was there, and the disaster caused uh, some some people lost their lives, and it even lost lot lot led to a loss of so many uh, livestock and all. Uh, so what happened actually on the fateful night of second between second and third December? uh we'll discuss i'll show you a documentary so place of occurrence was bhopal madhya pradesh the company union carbide corporation uh, and the chemical which caused the uh, disaster was methyl isocyanate 27 tons you can imagine how much quantity of chemical was leaked into the atmosphere and those whoever were in the vicinity they just inhaled it and they were somewhere met with immediate death when some were paralyzed for life or even some other problems were well observed so what happened uh, these are some photos of the picture uh, of the pictures of the actual uh, event so among the 5 lakh people exposed to the gas 20000 have died till date some died immediately due to acute uh, acute disease as well as chronic diseases were also there so still 1 lakh 20000 people from the 5 lakh 1 lakh 20 lakh almost 25% people Continue to suffer the devastating health effects as a result of their exposure. So, Union Carbide Corporation was there, the chemical industry was there. Now, outside it was just looking as a normal chemical industry. Uh, but what happened? It was started in 1916 in Bhopal. So, it was using this particular gases: phosgene, monomethylamine, methylamine, methyl isocyanide (MIC), which was leaked, and the pesticide carbaryl, also known as seven. For its various processes, so it was taken over. Now, what happened is the company is uh, solvent, and it has been taken over by Dow Chemicals in 2001. So now the company, because it has been taken over by Dow, and now the whatever liabilities were there against the company, so Dow, because it has taken over, and it is it was not present during that time, the people have suffered actually. The people have suffered not only from the disaster, but also the financial the litigation and cases and all the, which they had uh, they were supposed to get, uh, claim to a lot of financial you can say financial help they were entitled to financial help but because of many we can say reasons their claims are not yet fulfilled so now refused union government liability in bhopal because the accident which happened in 1984 was in the time of methyl isocyanide uh, it, it was in time of union carbon Now the Dow Chemicals is taken over, so it is not liable for the accident, and hence it is not or uh, not giving compensation uh, in, in, instead of that uh, union company. So what happened that fateful night? So MIC methyl isocyanide pressure tank in tank number six hundred and ten 
simple i will tell you simple procedures if they would have been followed the disaster would have been averted also you will see in the documentary here is just a small example which i am showing you so that will be clear so that in future whenever we come across some situation we should be able to at least mitigate the effects or at least prevent the disaster altogether if if it is not possible at least mitigate the effect so what happened there was mic methyl isocyanide in the storage tank so pressure in tank number 610 builds up alarmingly because of an extremely violent chemical reaction and methyl isocyanide vapor escapes rupturing a safety disk so what happened there was a violent chemical reaction and this chemical methyl isocyanide escapes rupturing a safety disk which was there and popping a safety valve so the valve was removed the disk was removed the, generally the chemicals are stored in a very airtight and very you can say safe containers but that disk was ruptured and that valve was also made open because of the pressure so tank there was another tank 600 there was a, several tanks so tank 619 was completely empty but if just the wall between two this is suppose 610 this is 609 if just the wall would have been opened here some connection was there it was not open the timely action was not taken if just the wall would have been open the pressure would have been released and the entire gas would have been or at least half of the gas would have been transferred to this particular chamber and the effects would have been mitigated so tank 609 would have was empty but nobody opened the valve between the two tanks to relieve the pressure in 610 so it just built on so what was the uh, why this happened because the refrigerant system was out of commission and it could not be cooled so that was the reason why this reaction was there so first and foremost what was the refrigerant system which was there for cooling this particular uh, gases methyl isocyanide and other gases it was out of commission it was not maintained properly its operation maintenance was not properly done it was out of commission and it could not be able to suitably cool down the reaction so the reaction was built the temperature pressures were built what happened now suddenly the pressure caused the gas to exert now there was a water curtain the water curtain was designed now the, the faulty design also came to the fore after this accident so water curtain which have neutral we should have neutralized the mic was designed to reach a height of 12 to 15 meters but the way mic vapor was gushing out due to the high pressure it was gushing out at 33 meters above the ground so this curtain was only designed for 12 to 15 meters it would have, it would have been designed at a higher height maybe this accident would have been less uh, would have caused less harm the flare tower which was there for again the uh, absorbing or cooling or spraying the various uh, chemicals for reducing the effect could not be used at a uh, because at a length of piping was corroded the piping was corroded which supplied water to this flare tower so if if in, in the chemicals if you don't have supplied water and other chemicals for suppressing the chemicals it could not be done because what happened the piping was corroded because it has not been replaced it was just installed and had been not replaced means it was just kaam chalane ke liye as it is said na kaam chalane ke liye wo chal raha tha just dikhane ke liye but actually nothing was being is what it was there just for as a as a as a purpose to show to the authorities that we are there we are some safety walls and all we have some safety mechanism but it was not to the fore so of course the vents gas scrubber was there it was supposed to spray caustic soda and spray in vapors to neutralize them but that was shut down for maintenance so this was again the problem which was there so poisonous gas escaped from the top of the vent and so you can just imagine how compounding this problem was there even if one safety measure was there there are four safety measures which could have been if, if uh, first of and foremost if the revision system would have been proper it would have taken care of this at itself then the water curtain would have been proper not taken then the flare tower would have been proper it would have mitigated and the fourth check was this particular gas scrubber if it have been there it would have been working properly it would have neutralized them but it was shut down for maintenance and hence it did not work what happened as a result the gas just went out the methyl isocyanide just pressed in under pressure it just blew from the tank we will see in the videos you will be able to comprehend what we are discussing right now and and what happened was immediately into it was sprayed into the atmosphere of bhopal which was a very densely populated it was in the heart of the city so it was spread and all people within the range of 2, two to 3 kilometers of that area were affected so what happened respiratory disorders irritation to the lungs 
causing coughing and shortness of breath high exposure cause blind up to a blind up of fluids pulmonary edema causing asthma cancer hazard mutations were caused in genetic changes it caused cancer reproductive hazard exposure to methyl isocyanate caused miscarriages and all so even many toxins were found in mother's milk and they were transmitted to the recipient baby so many can say compounding sort of problems were there so even the cattle and livestock many livestock left there because they at least people na they were in home but they were directly into the atmosphere and they were the most severely affected so methyl isocyanide uh, so what what is just chemical composition and all we'll discuss and physical properties so its chemical composition is this c2h3no is in liquid form highly volatile colorless gas strong sharp odor is there uh, flash point is minus 7 degrees molecular weight is this boiling point and all these are all the in say physical constraint uh, physical characteristics of that particular gas so methyl isocyanate is on the hazardous substances list and is regulated by osha that is occupational safety and health administration and cited by these all authorities so it is always used to be used as a very uh, carefully to be used because it is a very highly flammable subject substance so it is on the special health hazard substance list because the flammable flammable and it is highly reactive so again it has uh, these are the you can say indices uh, key indices so you can see uh, it was rated very serious in in terms of its flammability and very reactive also moderately reactive in terms of its uh, can say reactivity by this organization so this was there people were knowing still the people who are there in charge of that particular uh, factory their lax attitude was the problem so chemical dumped by union carbide in in bhopal because they shut the factory so what they did was even after this accident they dumped many chemicals into the uh in bhopal you can see in the soil of bhopal so these many chemicals were dumped in air soil and water this amount you can just see how huge amount of okay because they 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 lost everything after the accident they were in the serious you can say liabilities you know and they could not so they just just dumped so for the dumping you can just see how they just dumped and just you know nobody was held accountable mr anderson and some people were there but they were just because uh they, they were it was an external you can say um, it was not an india indigenous company or indian company so they had that protection and all from indian laws at that time so toxic materials in soil and water you can see these many toxic materials in parts per billion for for 1 billion these many parts were observed in soil and water and the testing and all was done you can just imagine how high na because generally you, you calculate your this in parts per billion alone na So you can see in parts per million will be in seven eighty seven two parts per million. You can imagine how high the concentration is there. So toxic material in soil, hexa chloro, hexa chloro cyclo hexane and chloro benzene are found in samples. Mercury was found. You can imagine mercury, which was to be, which is also a very poisonous substance, it was found between twenty thousand to sixty lakh times the standard level in soil. This because they had just done so again it was not safe for because the fertility and all of soil would be decreased again if even if the soil, soil is used for crops and all the chemical the, the chemical reacts are carried into the genes of the plants and all and they are then transferred to the human beings so again this problems were are still there people are still facing the problems the people who are living in the vicinity of that area compensation and legal aspects So compensation claim was made of 470 million dollars. That is dollar 500 per day. So 20 years just passed because no action was taken, courts and all. Because that time there were no even today the courts functioning and all is quite you can say slow. So and then when the company was dissolved, cases were reviewed and put in American court. But doubt if you because once they had taken Union Carbide, why why will they pay? Na actually. Uh, because it was not their liability, it was Union Carbide's liability, but they were bankrupt and they had become insolvent. So again, the problem is that common man who suffered the tragedy has still not been served proper justice. So twenty thousand people were killed, one lakh twenty thousand people severely affected. 
It was a very major disaster in the history of Indian industrial disasters. We'll see some videos pertaining to it. And we'll, I hope you'll be able to comprehend it. Listen carefully to the video. Because in the exam, if a question comes on industrial disaster, if, generally because we are talking on Indian context, we have to focus on this type of disaster, Bhopal gas strategy. And all. Even if your direct question is not there as in the exam on Bhopal gas strategy, somewhere you have to link it with it because it is a major event in the annals of Indian history of industrial disaster. December Everybody is able, it is audible to all. This avoid was just volume. If it is audible, just type yes in the chat box. This factory released a chemical cloud that killed thousands of people in just a few terrifying hours. The accident happened because of a chemical reaction that took place in this tank. A reaction that led to one of the biggest man-made disasters in history. What happened here was seconds that shocked the entire world. Disasters don't just happen. They're the result of a sequence of events locked together in time. The science behind what went wrong is hidden in these seismic seconds. The city of Bhopal lies on the edge of a large lake, almost exactly in the center of India. It is the capital of the region and is growing at a phenomenal rate. Population of over 1.4 million. This is a busy, bustling, and vibrant place. But on the 3rd of December 1984, Bhopal was the scene of a catastrophe on an unprecedented scale, as at least 3,000 people choked to death in a cloud of gas. Many times that number survived that night, only to have their health and livelihoods wrecked, while compensation claims and legal battles continue to rage. The killer chemical was something called methyl isocyanate, or MIC for short, and it came from this plant built at the edge of the city. It has been sealed off from the outside world for over 16 years, preserved by the Indian government as it investigated the cause of the disaster. Perhaps the most chilling artifact here is the actual vessel from which the poison escaped, now dug up from its original underground location. The MIC was released due to an unforeseen and uncontrollable chemical reaction. To explain how it is thought to have happened, several workers at the factory agreed to revisit it for the first time since that terrible night in December 1984. I joined Union Carbide in 1971, where there was actually nothing anywhere. There were just a few small plants. By 1983, we had built this up into one of the most efficient and uh, safe chemical complexes in India. But standards had been deteriorating for some time. And I was being shunted from department to department. I was in safety, then I was transferred to maintenance. At which point of time, I decided to quit. In my leaving interview, I mentioned to the management that they are in for trouble if they don't pull up their socks. And that's exactly what happened a year later. Built by Union Carbide, a giant multinational corporation, the factory manufactured pesticide, desperately needed as India struggled to produce enough food to cope with a population explosion. Seven, as the pesticide was called, works by attacking the nervous system of insects. And its production requires some very dangerous chemicals. On that dreadful night in December, those chemicals got out of control. 
the first person to notice that something was wrong, something that was to lead to the biggest chemical accident in history, was a technician called VN Singh. This was our control room, but it looked very different then when it was all quite new. I ran over to the pressure gauge and it went right off the scale. Outside, 40 meters away, the storage tank was about to deliver its deadly load. It was 15 minutes past midnight. The contents of this tank represent the triumph of profits over safety. To understand how this happened, we need to wind the clock back four hours. The events that led to the contamination of the tank are still disputed. But the findings of the Indian government point to a disaster that started at approximately 8.15 that December evening, when a plant worker began some routine maintenance. He connected a water hose to part of the plant's maze of pipework. Keeping the system clean was vital, as contaminants could easily be formed during processing. Dirt was supposed to flush out of the system through drainage nozzles, a process that would sometimes take hours. Almost immediately, something began to go wrong. He had unwittingly started a sequence of events that would end with the deaths of thousands. use a wide range of hazardous materials. For example, we might use sulfuric acid in the manufacture of detergents. Detergents themselves are not harmful, but sulfuric acid is potentially dangerous. Uh, likewise, there are intermediates that go into the manufacture of shampoo, which, which are made using cyanide. If you're going to carry out a process at that time, you need to be careful. Clearly, at both power, they weren't. The disaster's origins lay in the particular way in which Union Carbide chose to make seven. Chemistry is a little bit like cooking. If we're trying to make a molecule like seven here, what we'd like to do is to buy the ingredients off the shelf. We don't want to have to make any complicated intermediates if we can possibly avoid it. The molecule here, seven, is made up of this part, which we can buy essentially off the shelf. More problematic is putting this part on here. The process that Union Carbide used at Bhopal started with the reaction of carbon monoxide and chlorine to make phosgene. Phosgene provided one of the crucial building blocks for methyl isocyanate, or MIC, which in turn became a component of the seven molecule. Phosgene had killed a worker three years earlier in a foretaste of the agony still to come. Ashraf Khan, a maintenance worker, was working in this area. He was wearing a breathing air hood and only dungar is below that. Phosgene splashed onto him and soaked his dungarees. He panicked and he ran for a shower this way. He came here, he removed his foot. The phosgene which had penetrated his clothes evaporated. He inhaled that and he died in hospital a few days later. Phosgene became infamous when it was used in warfare and most infamously during the First World War. It's relatively insoluble in water and when released it creates a white cloud quite close to the ground and I understand smells of new mown hay. Because it's insoluble, if you breathe it in, it won't get absorbed at the upper end of your uh, respiratory tract but will reach the furthest, deepest parts of your lungs. This is a picture of those deep parts of your lungs. It's these membranes that phosgene damages. If you breathe in phosgene, these membranes will be destroyed and blood will flood into your lungs. In effect, you will drown in your own blood. As phosgene was so lethal, 
the plot only ever stored enough of it to satisfy one day's production. That way, even if there was a release, the scale of the problem would be minimal. But phosgene is merely one ingredient for the chemical that was to kill thousands. The next step in the process is to put this group on. You can do that in a number of ways. You could add on this bit and then that bit. But Union Carbide chose to do it in one go, a single reaction. Now that's cheaper and potentially a lot cleaner. So it has some advantages. The downside is that the chemical we need to do that is methyl isocyanate, which is extremely dangerous. So I can just imagine what happened. The, the, the customer, you can say the company just for some uh, reducing some cost, what they did was they just to speed up the process, they instead of following the conventional safer way, they chose chose an entirely different approach so that the chemicals could be produced at a faster rate. In contrast with phosgene, MIC was stored in three vast tanks, originally buried in a concrete bunker near the edge of the plant. 40 feet long and 8 feet in diameter, each was capable of holding 42 tons of the potentially lethal chemical. Where phosgene was a famous killer kept in small quantities, MIC was stored on a scale that would kill thousands. that uh, we probably couldn't reach easily by other chemistry. So it's very useful to the chemist. He can build things in a way that he wouldn't otherwise be able to do. It's also reactive, which means that things that happen, happen fast. We, uh, we don't need very long reaction times, and we tend to get perhaps cleaner chemistry, fewer waste products. However, the reactivity is a problem. Uh, it means that it's going to react with a whole range of things it might come into contact with. Uh, water, for example, or we're still people. Keeping MIC apart from water is vital, because if the two liquids mix, anybody nearby would be in serious danger. MIC is a highly irritant gas. It has two important physical properties that make it particularly unpleasant. The first is that it's very soluble in water. Uh, and the second is that it, it, it vaporizes or, or boils at a temperature almost exactly the same as uh, as, the, as the body. This means that if you inhale MIC at low concentrations, it's going to affect in the first place those parts of your body that are wet, which will absorb the M MIC. That's your eyes, your mouth, your throat, and your upper airways. At high enough concentrations, it'll get the whole way down to that part of your lung where oxygen is transferred into your bloodstream. And very similar to the uh, effects of phosgene, if that part of your lung is damaged, then serum will flood from your bloodstream into your lungs, and you'll should have been protected from contamination, but a catalogue of failures was about to have the most terrible consequences for the people of Bhopal. The tragedy at Bhopal happened when some 35 tonnes of a lethal chemical called methyl isocyanate reacted with water and vaporised. Thousands of people in the shanty town that surrounds the plant were gassed, dying in the same horrific way that soldiers were killed in the First World War. The disaster was due to an amazing combination of circumstances. Had each happened on their own, the accident would never have occurred. In terms of designing chemical plants, there are really two sorts of safety. One is designing the plant to be safe in the first place, and the second is operating it safely. And at Bhopal, there were problems in both areas. 
three hours to go until the catastrophic release. The first of many hundreds of litres of water found their way from a routine cleaning operation into the main pipe system that ran throughout the factory. It should have been impossible for the water to get very far, but mistake number one had already been made. A safety procedure existed to isolate sections of pipeline before they were cleaned. A simple piece of metal called a slip blind is inserted and the bolts done up tight achieving an impenetrable seal. Incredibly, this procedure was often ignored at Bhopal. To install a slip line like this would probably take about two hours and you would have had to wear a lot of protective clothing because when you undid the bolts of these flanges, the possibility of chemicals splashing onto you would be there. If one of these small pieces of steel had been inserted into the process pipeline, in all probability this disaster would not have happened. By 9.30, the water was able to travel freely through the hundreds of meters of pipe that separated the main plant from the MIC storage area and its deadly content. The disaster could still have been averted, however, had the gauges in the factory's control room been trustworthy. When this plant was designed and installed, the instrumentation here was probably state-of-the-art as far as India goes. Over the years, lack of maintenance contributed to the instruments giving faulty readings from time to time, which probably led to the operators and to the staff not taking the readings very seriously. MIC is kept under pressure with inert gas to stop anything from getting into the tank. But for six weeks, the pressure gauge had read virtually zero. It was presumed that the gauge was faulty. In fact, there was a leaky valve connecting the tank to the plant's main pipe system. If gas could get out, then water could get in. By approximately 10 o'clock, the contamination had started. The reaction of MIC in water generates carbon dioxide as one of its products. It also generates heat. Of course, the heat starts to warm the mixture. It's an exothermic reaction, as we call it. What I'm going to do is a similar reaction that obviously uses much safer chemicals. This material is going to behave rather like the MIC did. The material I'm adding is in effect the water that, was, uh, that came into the vessel. We add that, and as you can see, gas bubbles start to form. Water is denser than MIC, so it falls to the bottom of the vessel. The first part of the reaction takes place where the two layers of liquid meet. So this looks exactly like the MIC water interface would. We're generating bubbles at the boundary between the two liquid layers. But the key issue is the heat. This heat heats up the reaction mixture, the temperature rises. And when the temperature rises, the reaction speeds up and in turn generates heat even faster. It's what we call a runaway. Even with water in the tank, it should have been possible to control the situation. MIC has to be kept cool, and the tanks were housed in a concrete bunker, insulating them from the fierce heat of central India. There was also a cooling system controlled from a purpose-built refrigeration plant. The senior management, however, had decided to switch it off. This wasn't running on the night of the tragedy. In fact, it had been off since May 84. The coolant inside had been removed and it was permanently disabled. Switching the refrigeration off was an insane thing to do. These reactions, these exothermic runaway reactions, had... So can you imagine how human errors led to this disaster? There's one more final part of it. Take 
place when we're generating more heat than we can remove. The refrigeration system was there to remove heat. Switching it off made this incident much, much more likely. Incredibly, another safety device had been bypassed in defiance of Union Carbide's own operating instructions. You can see now the reaction is getting quite enthusiastic, getting some bubbles, some droplets of liquid coming out of the top of the vessel. And if this were an industrial scale vessel, we would have a significant emergency on our hands. At Bhopal, there was a machine purpose built to deal with toxic gases, a device known as a vent gas scrubber. This is the vent gas scrubber we had at Bhopal. It works by neutralizing toxic gas before releasing it into the atmosphere. On the night, though, it was switched off for maintenance. Even if this vital piece of equipment had been on, it was too small to cope with the quantity of MIC that was now out of control. This is really bubbling violently now. As you can see lots of gas being generated, and of course, at both Pearl, the whole thing was happening on a scale 100,000 times bigger. There's absolutely nothing that can be done to slow this down. Heat is being generated so fast that on an industrial scale we cannot remove it quickly enough to stop the reaction. This is the, uh, the worst nightmare for a chemical plant operator. This is a disaster. Vian Sun was working at the plant that night, and it was his duty to check the area where the pipe washing had started some four hours earlier. By this time, midnight, water was flowing once again from the drainage nozzles, but he noticed that something was wrong. The disaster was just minutes away. When I got here, I saw water running out of the bleeders, but my eyes started to hurt. This was quite common at the factory, but that day it was very, very bad. So I ran to the control room. What VN Singh saw when he got to the control room about a minute later was the final stage of a chemical process that had been underway for over two hours. At a molecular level, things are happening extremely fast. As the system warms up, a second reaction kicks in. Trimerization, the reaction between three methyl isocyanate molecules that forms a stable molecule and generates more heat. As each bond is made, energy is released. Now the MIC molecules were able to react with themselves. All 42 tons of the material are free to generate heat almost simultaneously. The reaction is getting very violent at the moment. Material is starting to leave the top. Lots of gas being generated. Bubbles of liquid leaving. Right now with the, the equipment they had at Bhopal, there was absolutely nothing that could be done to save the people. So I came running up to tank E610, and even though it was underground, you could hear a terrible rumbling noise, and the concrete started to shake and crack. The tank was now in serious danger of bursting, but it held. Instead, a pressure relief valve blew, and the gas was on its deadly way. It travelled to the main plant structure, through the useless vent gas scrubber, and then out. The gas was carried away by a southeasterly wind, clear of the plant, but directly over the sleeping city of Bhopal. Last 
started working for Kappa in 1971. It was one of the proudest moments of my life because I was selected to work for Union Cover. But after that disaster, I am ashamed now that I was ever associated with a company which did not manage to live up to its name and reputation in India. place when we're generating more heat. You can just see this. Union Carbide have declined to give an interview for this program because they still maintain their uh, this is their consist their side they're trying to maintain that this was disaster was due to sabotage or due to some you can say um, uh, you can say some miscreants which purposefully created this or uh, created some conditions for the disaster so that its name would be defamed so no individual has been prosecuted there is no been there has been no you can say uh, prosecution many people many court uh, you can say many people have given their sides on the in the courts but still no prosecution and all these things are there so 20000 people have died some died immediately some died after some time and still the compensation and all are not been received so times of occurrences present in the films are approx this in this is are approximate and they are not exactly but they are still being investigated and it is a matter of investigation so what we can say from this particular disaster is look, there was so many situations there were so many situations and the disaster was bound to happen if any one you can say situation would have been properly addressed or proper care would have been taken by any you can say any one of the agencies involved in that particular process the management of any of these safety measures if they have uh, properly if they have properly maintained or operated the disaster or at least the effects would have been avoided so again it is a lesson for all of us and what we can do now as a mitigation measure uh, the the industries and all of course the people living the people living near that industries they are residences Again, they need to be questioned or that industry should be moved outside the residence zone. Like now it is happening in India and also in, in Maharashtra also. If you see this uh, Taloja and all region, na, where a uh, lot of industries were there previously. Now these industries are now shifting their ways towards, you say, uh, that Rasaini and all these places. Na, because why? Because a lot of residential complexes and all are built by Sitko in this Taloja and this Kargar and all these regions, na, which are very close to this. Uh, factories which were the industries which were there. So again they are also using harmful chemicals so of course safety precautions and measures are taken now the safety standards which are there are quite uh, you can say quite better than in those days but still a disaster it is a hazard no? it is a hazard and the disaster it can be turned it can be it, it is it is from a hazard so hazard if it is not properly tackled it, can, it comes into a disaster so so safety proper mechanism should be there we as engineers, we as disaster managers, we, we as engineers, even if we don't select the disaster management field, no? we, as, we, as an engineer, our responsibility is that that by default we are disaster managers. So we should keep this in mind. So tomorrow we'll discuss one more such accident uh, of Chernobyl and a small, uh, small you can say, I'll share an incident of the Fukushima accident also. When this will conclude the module two. And then we'll start the module three afterwards. So tomorrow we'll complete the module two. So attendance link I'm circulating. You just fill this link quickly. Sir, please share PPT also. Yeah, that I will share in the classroom. Today and tomorrow I'm slightly busy in some other work. By Saturday I will share everything in the classroom and also in your group. Fine. Everything I'll share the videos and all. Now I'll just process those videos and share. Fine, Magdum. Yes, sir. Sir, have you made Google Classroom for this? We have made, I have shared in the group. I will again share. We have made Google Classroom. Okay, okay, sir. Please share the code once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will okay. send the code again. I will send the code again. Okay. okay. So, anybody has some questions on this?
because what happened na if if uh, if any of the member of the you can say uh, either the management of the safety engine anybody had taken proper precautions na this disaster would have been avoided or at least its effect would have been minimized so it was not done there it, there was lapse from their side also also some government you can say regulations were not those not not that strong the they have to do audit and all of these regions uh, of such industries which they do not which they fail so it was not a you can say not single person could be held responsible for it many people were there many you can say reasons were there for this disaster yes sir fine